any name in this room, any business, ministry, house, anything we have, your name is above us. Your name is above our aspirations, our dreams, our plans, our families, our spouses, our, our whatever we may or may not have. Your name is above us. And God, we just say thank you of how you loved us and how you blessed us and how you called us out of darkness into the marvelous light and you've given us Something that is amazing, your love, your blood, your mercy, your grace, your steadfastness. Father, we just, we, so many times we take it for granted and we apologize even right now. But we return and say thank you for your provision. Thank you that you, you called us, you loved us, and you sustained us. Yes. So tonight, God, we just return to you and say thank you. And may the Lord of glory have his glory in this place. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do we love Jesus? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have a Bible going to Genesis chapter 48. And I just, I want us to be encouraged tonight. Most of us, we know the scripture that talks about the words of our mouths and how with our words we bless, with our words we curse. And I want us to, to have a good refreshing tonight in knowing that what's coming out of my mouth matters. Yes, absolutely. Okay? And what I mean is, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, goodness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, long-suffering. Do y'all know what's not in that, in, in that list is prayer. Prayer is not a gift of the Spirit. I want you to think about that for a minute. So many times we... You know, as the Spirit moves on me, I'm going to pray as the Spirit. No, as, the, as you get in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will pray through you. But prayer is something you have to do. Yeah. It's not something that necessarily, necessarily that the Spirit moves on you to do. He can. But I'm telling you, to pray is something you've got to do. And not just the leading of the Spirit. In fact, prayer is to be without For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, right? right. To be yeah. someone... In a prayerful attitude at all times, right? right? That's on you, that's on me. Fasting is on me. Fasting is not a gift of the Spirit. Fasting is something that I purpose to do. Well, can God move on you? Yes, He can. He doesn't necessarily have to. It's something that I can set aside as unto God. Prayer is something that I have to decide to do. Correct? Amen. Right. Not a gift of the Spirit. So many times we want to lump that in there that that is a part that's not. That's something that I have to make a purpose. That's right. I'm going to pray. That's right. Well, I just don't have time. You're telling me I don't have time to talk to the, the most important thing in my life. Mm. And I say thing, meaning God, the presence, the El Shaddai Elohim. I'm talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who's ind indescribable. The Ancient of Days, the Prince of Peace, the Lily of the Valley, all the things that we can say and name to describe Him and His attributes, yes. you have to take the time to talk to Him. Yes. And then take the time to listen for Him to speak to you. Yes. You know, so many people, they talk about, like, I'm not hearing God speak, I'm not. Are you taking time to listen? Right. Mm -hmm. You ever had a, had a friendship that was one-sided? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to see that person. Why? Because it was at least an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, and you could not get a word in. Yes. They would ask a question, and the time you took a breath to answer, they was all moved on something else, and now yes. here they go. Yes. <laughs> well, what about... <clears throat> I've never had those kind of things. If you have one in this room, don't admit it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. How aggravating is that? Very. How Very. aggravating are you to God? Very. Oh, here he comes again. Mm -hmm. All he wants to do is whine and complain and murmur about stuff and sin. Because what murmuring and complaining is. Mm -hmm. But he don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite. Mm -hmm. All right. Y'all in Genesis? Yes. Get up to 48. Jacob's about to die. Look at verse 15. No, I'm sorry. 
Look at verse 12. Let's feel back down to verse 12. So Joseph brought them, talking about his sons, from beside his knees and bowed down with his face to the earth. Verse 13, Joseph took them both, his sons, Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and he brought them near him. Verse 14, then Israel stretched out his right hand, laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. All right, what happened? Joseph brings his sons in there for to talk to his dad, who's about to bless them, and he brings one on each side of him so he can bless them, correct? Yeah. And he swaps his hands and puts mm -hmm. his hand, his right hand, on mm -hmm. the youngest and his left hand on the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. What's happening? I want us to look at something tonight that is, most of us, including myself, would say it, it, it's not that important, but it is. Mm -hmm. But it is. Mm -hmm. What's coming out of your mouth over your children, over your grandchildren, over those around you? In just simply saying, I bless you, as a patriarch, a matriarch, it's carrying a weight in the realms of heaven that most of us don't realize. Okay? I want you to see something right here. What verse were we? 14. 14? The initials we read for 14. Right? Yeah. Verse 15. And he blessed Joseph. He blessed Joseph, Joseph being his son. Jacob blessed his son and said, God, before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless these lads. Mm. He went through the dad to the sons, and he's giving glory to God and declaring who's about to bless these kids. And he says, let, the, let my name be upon them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. I want you to look at something right here. When this grandfather declared this over them, it's not just a declaration. He is opening up, let their loins be loose and let nations come out of them. Yes. Today, we don't kind of pray that kind of thing over our kids. Let nations come forth out of him. Let the nations of the earth be blessed through him. I mean, when's the last time? I know we pray over our family. We pray over our sons. We pray over our, our, our daughters. We pray. But when's the last time you prayed and said, let nations be blessed in their going and doing and what comes forth out of her womb? Mm -hmm. What comes forth out of her womb? Out of his lo loins. Let it come forth and let nations be affected and changed. That's in, that's in effect what he just did. Are you seeing this? And it says in verse 17, Now when Joseph saw that his father had laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly... His younger brother shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. All right, stop right there. So what happened is he crossed his hands. He's blessing. The right hand was the firstborn. It was the, the major blessing was in the right. He swapped it and put it on the younger. Joseph sees it and is displeased about it, so he's trying to move his daddy's hands over, and he says, no. And he starts declaring right here. He said, this one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be blessed. He's mm -hmm. going to, it's going to be good. Mm -hmm. But this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've seen this before in Jacob and Esau. We've seen this in, in several others in the Bible. But I'm telling you, if he had not gone by the Spirit of God, right. he's giving a blessing over one that God was wanting to do something different. Mm -hmm. Now see, in here, we look at this and we go... Well, God, he shouldn't have done that because this was his birthright. This was his place. This was what was designed to be his. But understand something. We're not all equal. Some people are blessed and they're called to be presidents and kings. Some are called to be generals and armies. Some are called to be workers in fields. That's right. Does that make God evil? No. No. 
It makes him righteous. It makes him all-knowing and just in what he does. Yeah. But your mind, the American mindset right now is all of us need to be equal in communism. Amen. We all need to have the same, same, and the same, same. And the same. that is not how God operates. And Chay has said it. Now in the prison, God's not a communist. He don't want us all the same. Right. And I'm telling you right now, right here, God is wanting to bless the younger over the other. And, and, and Grandpa says, he's going to be blessed. He's, it's going to be okay. But this one. Are you all with me? Mm -hmm. But what you can't do is if you're this one, is get jealous of what God's given this one. That's mm -hmm. right. And we in the church are notorious for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. But I wanted to lead that. I wanted to be the one. I, I, they passed me over to be the Sunday school leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was mine. I, I've been there the longest. Come on. And? And? Mm -hmm. How many in Israel got passed over to God to get to David? Looking for a man after his own heart. That's right. All of his brothers and how many other tribal leaders got passed over to get to David? Right. Who's out in a sheep field Killing a lion, killing a bear, getting ready to take on Goliath and don't even know it. But he's also getting prepared to become the king some years later. He was anointed over here, but he never became king till years later. That's right, that's right. Okay, but understand something. How many people did God pass? Because something was out of order. That's right. And God was looking for somebody to be king. Mm -hmm. Who should have been king before David? I'm just saying. It should never have been ripped out of Saul's hand. But it was. Why? His disobedience. That's right. And if we looked at that today, if, we, if Saul was in modern day American church and he did something, we would say, well, just repent. It'll be okay. God will restore you. And you can still be in leadership, brother. Mm -hmm. Wink, wink. I'm just saying, that's what we do today. Well, all you got to do is repent. Listen to me. If it was sin, and we read the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not, whatever. Does God mean it? Yes. Does he still mean it today? Yes. How important is it today? Absolutely. As important as it was when he said, you will not do this. Yes. Nor will you take the Sabbath nor will you, nor will you covet, nor will you seek your, your neighbor's wife, nor are you going to lie, nor are you going to... Does he still hate unjust weights? Yes. yes Does yes, he yes. still hate lying? Yes. Does he still... Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Mm. Well, it'll be okay, brother. You know, we'll just restore. We'll let them be restored. But listen, we need to understand what restoration is into back into leadership. Because I'm telling you, I know we're in the Old Testament. I know we're in the Old Covenant. And, but I'm telling you what a grandpa's doing over his grandsons was setting the precedent for what was coming. Look, flip over to, to uh, Genesis 27. No, 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 no. Hang on. Go to chapter 49. I didn't give you that one. Go to 49. Just load it up, verse 1. I want to show you something. I, I read this. I'm going to talk about this. But before we go to 27, let's look at 49 real quick. And I want to show you how just God is that goes against your way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There. Chapter 49, verse 1. Jacob called his sons. There's 12 of them, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, gather together that I may tell you what shall befall you in these last days. What would happen if, if Papa called all of us, his sons, in here and said, I, I need to pray over y'all before I leave. I need to declare what's going to happen to you when I'm gone. Are we about to pay attention? Mm -hmm. All right, let's pay attention. Come on, Reuben. Verse 3. Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and excellency of power. That's pretty awesome, right? Keep reading. Mm -hmm. Unstable as water, mm -hmm. you shall not excel. Mm -hmm. Because you went up to your father's bed. He slept with his dad's concubine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because you went up to your father's bed and you defiled it, he went up to my couch. <laughs> you're not getting your birthright. You're not getting your blessing. And your days are going to be unstable. Mm -hmm. But he repented. Mm -hmm. That's how we would look at it. 
But he repented. But he, but he, well, you need to give it to him. <coughs> it's your firstborn. It's his place. What God said, do. But he sinned. And he ripped it from him. Mm -hmm. And not only ripped it, he told him, your days are going to be terrible. You're unstable as water. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be told that from all your brothers? Mm -hmm. You're the oldest one in the room. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be, you, the birthright is yours. You're unstable as water. <laughs> Keep reading. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi, your brothers, your instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter into their council, and let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Verse 7, Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce. Mm. And their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and will scatter <coughs> them in Israel. <laughs> this is not looking good. When all the other brothers are going, uh-oh. <laughs> you done got plowed, and y'all got, oh boy. This is not going well for us. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. What we would look at and go, Oh, that dad, that that daddy needs to he needs to change what he's saying. Roger, you don't need to be saying that. That's your boys. That's not right. Well, they sinned and they did wrong before God. Way back there, but God forgave them. This I'm preaching the normal way. Come on. <laughs> I will divide them and gather them, scatter them in Israel. Go study them out. Levi didn't have any inheritance. Mm. They had little places in the cities of everybody else. And they had nothing that was theirs, even though they were the priests before God. Why? Because of what their forebearer did. And then he goes in Judah, verse 8. You are he that your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey of my son you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion and as a lion who shall arouse him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Who Shiloh? Jesus. And to him shall be the obedience of the people. Binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey's coat to the choice vine. He washed the garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth are whiter than milk. Mm. He's prophesying about Jesus coming mm. through Judah. Yes. Wow. And you keep reading these signs and what this dad is saying about them. I'm just telling you. <coughs> We, if we modern day heard somebody speak over their sons like that, we would probably rebuke them and plow them and say, brother, you need to have grace and mercy. You need to... Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. All right, flip over to Genesis 27. Genesis chapter 27, and we're going to start at verse 6. So Rebecca spoke to her son, saying... Indeed, I heard your father speak to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me game and make savory food for me that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now, therefore, my son, verse 8, obey my voice according to what I command you. Verse 9, now go now to the flock and bring me. For there are two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food for them, for, for, from them of your father, for your father, such as he loves. Verse 10, he shall take it to your father that he may eat it and that he may bless you before his death. All right, what's... Rebecca trying to help Jacob get the blessing. The birthright he already got. It's his. His brother sold it. But now here comes the blessing. And I'm telling you, we don't put enough stock in blessing. You know, when we're riding, going wherever, and I sneeze, and one of my kids go, bless you. I tell them, no, but thank you, I'll receive the blessing. You know, I'm being funny to them, but I'm being serious. I'll receive that blessing. Bless you. I, I received it. When was the last time you walked around just telling somebody, hey man, be blessed. Be blessed. Well, we do. A lot of us in here do. But if you do it outside of this room, our community of believers, it, 
daughters ought to be blessed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what we don't understand is, what are you declaring over that person? Because Jacob, I mean, uh, Isaac is getting ready to die. And he's calling his son, thinking he's calling Esau. And Jacob is going to come to him. And then let's look at verse uh, 15. Rebecca took the choice clothes of her elder son Esau, which were into the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the of the kids of the goats on his hands and the smooth part of his neck. And she's making him look like and smell like Esau, right? Mm -hmm. So skip down. Look at verse. Uh, uh, where is it at? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yep. And, he, and Isaac says to Jacob. Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's game, so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father, verse 26, Isaac said to him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him and said. All right, look what he says right here. And this is so simple, but I want you to just read this with me. This is a dad about to die. Declaring something over his son. And again, most of us just hear and we just pass it and we don't think much about it. I'm telling you, before God, it carries weight. What's coming out of your mouth? Okay? Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Verse 28. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Okay, what's he saying? My God will prosper you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 29, let people serve you. Nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren. And let your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you. And blessed be those who bless you. Mm -hmm. Short, simple, powerful. Mm -hmm. And not just powerful. It sealed something over him that carried weight before heaven. See, husbands need to be declaring this kind of stuff over their wife. Mm -hmm. Wives need to be declaring blessings over their husbands as they're headed out to work, as they're going to do it. We need to declare it over our children. We need to, I'm telling you, it matters what's coming out of your mouth. <clears throat> Verse 30. Now it happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting, 31. He also had made savory food and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of the son's game that your soul may bless me. 32. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? So he said, I'm your son, your firstborn Esau. Then he, Isaac trembled exceedingly and said, Who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came and I have, what does it say? Yes. And indeed he shall be We would go, well, hey, Dad, just bless him too. Well, come here, boy. Hey, God. That's what we would do. Watch what he says here. Verse 34, and Esau heard the words of his father. He cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry. And said to his father, bless me, me also, O oh my father. Don't mm -hmm. just read through this, catch it. Because he's, he's getting what his brother has done. Mm -hmm. Now look what Isaac says to Esau, verse 35. He said, your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing." And again, we would go, but daddy, just pray over him. Just declare something. It'll be okay. Just speak something. Look what he says. And Esau said, 36, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And now look, he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? Have you not get, waited something to give me, daddy? 37, then Isaac answered and said to Esau, Indeed, I have made him, Jacob, your master, and all his brethren I have given to him. 
as servants and grain and wine I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? Stop right there and go back. Let's read what he said. Look at verse 27. And he came here, kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothes, and blessed him, and said, Show the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. 28, here it is. Therefore, may God give you the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be master over your brethren, and let your mother's son bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curses you, and blessed be those who bless you. It's two verses, y'all. It's two verses. Two. And it changed his life. Mm -hmm. Just that simple. From a dad over his son. They will bow to you. Your wine will be, you're going to be blessed and you're going to be over people. That's what he's saying. Even your, your brethren will be under you. Son comes in and says, is there nothing for me? I've already made him your master. In essence, that's what he did. Just because he spoke it. Do you realize how powerful? When someone, when a kid comes through and, and messes up, you stupid idiot. Do you know what they're really declaring over, do you know how many curses we're releasing over? Do you know when we look at somebody and what they're wearing and how stupid can they be? You don't wear that after Labor Day. Everybody knows that. I don't know what I'm talking about. You don't wear white after Labor Day, do you? All you ladies don't wear white dress, white pants, all that stuff, right? You don't mix brown and black, do you, baby? I do. But she, no, you don't wear black and blue. No, I just said taboo, taboo, taboo. <laughs> Jay, you learning stuff. See? <laughs> What's coming out of your mouth? What's coming out of your mouth? When, 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 when Roger almost cuts his hand off as a wife, what's coming out of my mouth toward my man? Are you with me? When, when, when decisions are made and things, how many young women are cursing their husband and don't even realize it when they're with all their little lady friends and they're laughing at whatever their child did, their husband did, their whatever did, what's coming out of your mouth? Because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's two verses. Mm -hmm. it's two. And we read this and we go, what's the big deal? But well, before God, it was a big deal. Yes, yes. It was a big deal. Look at verse 39. Then Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Esau, this is his blessing. Behold your dwelling. No, I'm saying that's Jacob. Right? No, this is Esau. Isaac answered and said to him, Behold your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Look at verse 40. Here's his blessing. But your short sword shall live, and you shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass when you become restless that you shall break from his yoke from off your neck. Mm -hmm. There's your blessing. Mm -hmm. Your days are going to be troubled, but one day you'll be free of it. Mm -hmm. Be blessed, son. In your American mentality says, surely he could have blessed him. Surely he could have said so. Surely, surely, surely needs to get in the will of God and declare out of the mouth by the will of God and not according to your way of thinking. What if, what if today my sons are there and I'm about to die and I look at one of them and say, Nations are going to, and you're going to go, but you, you trouble lies at your door all to your last breath. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. You better declare by the Spirit of God and not by your way of thinking. 
Because your mind says, well, I've got to bless him, and, and you're going to be blessed, and you're coming, and you're going to be blessed, and you're going, and blessed be the name of the Lord. I agree, so be it, but, but we also know some of us have had troubled lives, have we not? Right. Yes, indeed. Well, what was really spoken over us? Now, here's the thing. Let's back up. If if someone has declared over you and told you how what an idiot and all that stuff, then tonight we break that in the name of Jesus. All those curses and verbiages and words of people that, that bound you and you don't even know it may be broken. Okay? Yes. Are y'all with me? Yes. Okay. But if it's coming from God, then may the grace of God be there and help you walk it out. Oh, Jesus, yes. yes. Sometimes things happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Judah and I were headed to the water Monday mm -hmm. Monday to pull our nets out of the water <clears throat> and and we got there we fired the motor over to make sure you know it's going to fire off and crank and all that good stuff boom shut it down backed it right into the water I backed him in there I had him cut loose where he, he could crank and go on yang 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 a part went out just from the top of the landing to the time we put it in the water. It ain't cranking. Had to go to a mechanic because it was beyond me. Got it cranked. I got it fixed. Go back to the water. A few days later, Titus and I do this back at school. Point is, things happen. Yes. From from 100 yards away. Mm -hmm. From here, it's running great. To here, it won't crank. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Yeah. It's, it may not be the devil. Sometimes things just... <laughs> But we, with our way of thinking, with well, the devil. Listen, not everything's a devil. That's right. Right. It's not. But sometimes it is more complicated than just life. Sometimes we spoke something over somebody. Jay, what is the scripture you declare over your life every day? Psalm 68, 9. What does it say? Every day he loads us with benefits. This guy over here, Titus and I were headed somewhere this morning. I passed something in the middle of the road. And I couldn't see what it was. It was still dark. I couldn't see what it was. It was, I said, well, if it was worth anything, Jay will be f not far behind me. He'll stop picking up. Because <laughs> almost every day of his life, he's going to find something of value in the road or on the side of the ditch. Right or wrong. You, he is the most, I, I've never, I accuse him of going to people's carports and garages. Because, <laughs> I mean, he just, he will talk about, well, I'm, I'm going to need to get such and such. He'll find it in the middle of the road. He used me that. I took a picture one night and found two rods on the floating in the body. <laughs> Most amazing thing. I, but you know what he's declaring over it? Say it again. Every day he loads us with benefits. Mm. And you know what? Every day he finds something. Because you know what? He's declaring it over his life. I'm telling you, it matters what's coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder this whole thing going to break down. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, you know, my 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 daddy had such and such, and Papa died of such and such. You know, that's in our that's in our family. You know, one of us probably gonna get it. Y'all go ahead. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. You know, you wake up, you got a twin. So I bet that's I bet that's I bet that's. I was playing guitar last week, and my hand I couldn't hardly hold my pick because I was hurting. Well, I bet that's carpal tunnel. I bet, I, you know, he's 46. He'll be 47 this year. I bet that's carpal tunnel. Something happening. Keep your words to yourself and don't speak it over me. I don't want it. I, you know, you know, you know, when you get older, you know, you, 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 I don't want it. Keep it. You can have it. It happened to you. It, it might happen. I don't want it. Amen. Are you here? Don't be speaking death over me. That's right. Don't speak it. Speak blessings over me. And I'm not talking about a song. I'm talking about the reality of it matters what I'm telling you. God said, I'm going to bless you. God says, I'm going to, I'm going to. But how many of us, we, I'm just telling you. I read this and I go, God, you know, Jacob, you know, Reuben over there, even though he, if he repented and then offered sacrifice, you still, he still didn't get his blessing because he sinned. Can God forgive? 
Yes. yes. But he, there's also consequences to the sin, isn't there? That's right. Yes, yes, there are. Absolutely. You go out there and rob a bank tonight, mm -hmm. and they catch you. God can forgive you. Yes. But when that anvil falls, mm -hmm. you're going to jail. Yes. <clears throat> right or wrong? That's right. Yeah. Why? There's consequences. That's right. Yeah. You want the blessings of God, then you've got to give blessings. I'm telling you, as people of God, we need to walk around letting the blessings of God come out of our mouth. Almost every time I check out, I declare over that person, be blessed in Jesus' name. And they just, I, it may not mean anything to them, but it does to me and God. Because I'm telling you, with your words, you're acquitted, and with your words, you're condemned. What's coming out of your mouth? I feel like I'm getting sick. How many times have we said that and by the next morning, boom! <laughs> well, it's, it's not lack of faith. You know, it's reality. I, I get it. I do. But be careful what's coming out of your mouth. That's all I'm telling you. Be careful what you invite. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like those demons, okay, go ahead. <laughs> I, they're already active. I ain't helping them. <laughs> I'm not helping them out. You know, Halloween's coming. You know, the, they... Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I've already had that dance. I don't want that again. Mm -hmm. I was stupid and dumb, and I cried out to some things, and they came, and, and I learned a whole lot of valuable lesson right there. Look at Luke chapter 6. A bunch of us learned out of my stupidity. Luke chapter 6. I don't need any amens for the beard. <laughs> Luke chapter, 20, chapter 6, look at verse 27. But I say to you who hear, what does Jesus oh. say to those that are here? What did he say? Well, love. Yes. Who are you going to love? Enemies. 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 Do good to those who hate you. Verse 28. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. Verse 28. What does it say? Bless those who curse you. Huh. What are you going to do? You're going to open your mouth even to your worst enemy and declare something over them. May God do something amazing in your life. May he save you out of your darkness. And may the light of life find its way to you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like you, but may God save you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I look at that guy in the mirror and say that a lot. I don't like you. I'm not talking about when Roger's standing beside me. <laughs> that guy in the mirror, y'all y'all know who that person is in the mirror? You ever woke up and didn't care for that person? Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of mornings, right? Yes. And I'm going to declare the blessings of God over me and my family. Look at Romans chapter 12. I'm trying to do these scriptures. Romans chapter 12. Look at verse 14. Bless those who and bless and do not mm. See, this is New Testament. What you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be blessing people. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at verse 12. We labor working with our hands, being reviled, we yes. being persecuted, we endure, being defamed, we entreat, we have been made as the filth of the world, the offscurring of all things unto now. What are you going to do to people? Yes. You're going to bless them. Jesus, bless my daughter who has just been giving me grief. I say that a lot. God bless Gracie. I did something amazing. She was hoping I was going to mention one of the other two. God bless them. There's been a thorn in my side, Lord. You gave Paul a thorn. You gave me grace in God. I just break. <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to declare blessings over him. I walk up on her, and they're in school, or there she's sleeping, and I'm going to I'm going to touch my hand over and touch my wife, and I'm going to declare the blessings of God upon her. I'm going to declare the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm going to declare the blessings of God over my sons, mm -hmm. over their posterity, over what's coming forth out of them that has yet to come out of them. Mm -hmm. Y'all hearing me? I'm going to declare over you the blessings of the Lord. May they abound. Brother Gary's getting to go to Honduras. Mm -hmm. Lord willing, on Wednesday. And Lord willing, May the Lord abound upon him even greater than those with him. Yes. Well, brother, you shouldn't pray like that. Why not? Right. 
We're all equal. Why can't I pray a special blessing over my brother? Why I gotta pray the same thing over people? I don't know. I don't know them. I don't labor with them. I know him. That's right. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. You got to pray by the Spirit of God and not by your desire. Amen. Jay's getting ready to go to uh, go see Daniel out at the Indian Reservation. May God do. We know what the government, the Navajo Nation, is telling them. Mm -hmm. What they can't do, but I'm going to declare what God can do. Jesus. And the whole time he's out there, we're just going to pray the blessings of the Lord on them and show them where to go, how to maneuver, and how to outstep, Amen. and how to do like it's a third world country. Yeah. Why can I not declare blessings? Oh, why not? Sure. And are we not people of God, called by God? Does not abide in you? And when you declare as the oracles of God, when you stand and declare, when you stand and speak, as if God Himself were speaking through you, be blessed. Make divine appointments abound upon them from the time he gets in his car to go, the time he drives headed out that way, every time he stops to get gas or something to do whatever. Yes, may yes. just a divine appointment. May, may his tires <clears throat> hold where they wouldn't have held and, and nails that he runs through that he didn't see don't, don't have any purpose on his tires. Yes. Every ride around him may have flats, but he's going to keep going. Yes. Amen. Amen. Favor with the with the, the people on the airplane with, with drinks yes. and whatever yes. extra snacks and yes. why can't I declare that over him? Because I'm telling you it matters. Yes. That in the hotel that he gets the great a great pillow. Because that stuff does matter. <laughs> <laughs> and you know when somebody ain't praying. Tommy Hudson, I hope you watch this. Because I blame you many times. You weren't praying, and you was praying for Keith when you prayed for me. <laughs> so, you know. We show up, Keith, get that nice, fluffy pillow, and I get that hard brick that's that thick. <laughs> Tommy wasn't praying for me, he's praying for you. <laughs> Look at uh, James chapter 3. I'll finish this. See, and I, I hear you. I, I get that this is really simple, but it, it's more than just simple. It matters. James chapter 3. Look at verse 8. No man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Oh my goodness. Verse 9. With it we bless our God and Father. And with it we curse men. Who have been made in the similitude of God. In other words. Do not give God glory and honor. And look at Roger and curse him. Because he was made in the image of God. And in the image of God. So was he made. Yeah. <clears throat> so all of the preachers you want to keep talking about from your past, you better stop. Mm. And I know it's an Old Testament verse, but you better be careful. Touch not. Mm. Mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. They're God's to deal with, not yours. Yeah. If you're not in a place of authority over them, don't put your mouth on it. Because yes. when you put your mouth on it, now you're inviting all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, if it's not in your family, your locale, your area of authority, be careful what you put your mouth on. I don't care what they're doing, that church is doing, I don't care what that conference is, don't put your mouth on it. Okay? But you also have to be careful. Let me just caution you right here. You've got to be careful what you bless. Go read 1 John, I believe it is. When you tell someone God's speed... <laughs> And they're not of God. It's bad things. That's why I say what's coming out of your mouth better be by the Spirit of God. One more verse here. Hebrews chapter 6. And let's bring it all full circle. Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse 13. For when God made a promise to Abraham... Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Verse 14, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16, For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Verse 17, Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. That by two immutable things in which it is what? It is impossible for God to lie. That we might have a strong consolation 
who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Verse 19, this hope we have in the anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters into the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Your forefather, because we've all been grafted in. Yes. Right? So the promises to your forefather, Abraham, are the same promises to you. <clears throat> Surely I will bless you. Surely I will multiply you. In fact, Jesus said, wherever you go, lo, wherever you go to the ends of the earth, even in Lafayette, God is there. I know that's hard to believe. I don't often feel it, but the Lord says he's there. Amen. God will do. But I'm telling you, you wake up in the morning and you speak the blessings of God over you and your family. You go to bed at night declaring the blessings of God over you and your family. You start planting those righteous seeds, those things, and let it start germinating and let it come forth. And you call forth, I don't care what they're doing tonight. I don't care how fallen apart it seems that their life may be. You declare the glory of God over those daughters, over those sons, over those grandchildren. And you call them out of that darkness. You call those uncles and those aunts and you start speaking. You start declaring they will be born again. They shall. They will before, before their last breath. They will call out to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They will know him. They shall. The mercies of God. God, your word and you start calling the promises of God that your, that your children's children shall and that you are and that your finances are blessed. I, I understand you're on a fixed income. God can bring it in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Yes. you got to start believing it and declaring it and yes. letting the word of God and let faith rise up in you and start believing the word of God that he's not only able to do it, that he's able to do it in you yes. and through you yes. according yes. to the power that's inside of you. Yes. I'm telling you, you've got to stir it up to remember it, the promises that he gave you and start speaking it over you. Over your business. Over that which that which is over your schooling. Well, I'm just not smart in those areas. Okay, let's stay dumb. Amen. Look, I can't tell you the days. I can't look in the natural, I have trouble remembering, especially since COVID. Man, the fog has been there. I keep speaking. My mind is clear. My thought processes. I still, I'm declaring it almost every day over myself. 95 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, dementia. You know, you know. Why can't we declare life that she'll be as clear when she uh -huh. goes to be with Jesus as yes. she was when she was born? Yes. 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 Dude, we jump on that bandwagon. But what about the eyesight thing? Mm -hmm. I'm still declaring it over my son, the other one. Blind as a bat. His mama's right there ahead of him. If she don't have her glasses or contacts on, it's a bad thing. I know you, I saw you go by, but I don't know what you're doing. Right? In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So there's somebody in the room that this young boy prayed over his eyes, went to the doctor some years ago, and the prescription was going backwards a little bit. Had to change the prescription to go back, Jay, right? And that he even looked. Right. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just believe? Because I don't halfway do anything. Well, I'm saved, but that's it. I'm good. So then stay sick. Stay. Go ahead and die. I'm not good. I want to. I want to die. Hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The promises of God are yes and amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to lay down, and if I don't die a martyr, I want to lay down and sleep with my fathers. Mm -hmm. You read what Jacob did. He he spoke all this over him. He put his feet in the bed and went on. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. He put his feet in the bed and went on. That's how, that's how I want to go. Yeah. Come here. Y'all want to hear the blessing of God one more time. Gather around me and hear my sermon. Because mm -hmm. you can watch them. We sit down to eat and they all, here we go again. Because I'm always giving wisdom. I'm always yeah. counsel. I'm always. They get in the truck. They don't ride with me because I'm always just. <laughs> they bring up something. Here he goes. 
Now she'll get in there and say, all right, speak to me. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I got a question. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Watch the words of your mouth. I'm telling you. Father, we love you. We honor you. King of glory. Do the amazing in my brothers and sisters. Father, may they be blessed in their going and their coming. May all that their hand touches, may they prosper. Father, we just, we ask you in this room, where men, women, someone around us, our forebears, where they spoke curses over us, where those around us, even Christians that were well-meaning, they bound us with their words. God, we ask you just to simply tonight to break that stuff yes. off. Yes. Preconceived ideas and notions and counsels that we were given that were not according to the counsel of God. May it be broken. Yes. In the same way that, J that, that, that Isaac just simply spoke over his son, God, we just simply declare it tonight. Break the curses. Yes. Break those strongholds. Break those addictions. Rather, those generational things. Those those. Those things that were passed down by our forebears and words and verbiages that were declared. And even things that we might have spoken not even understanding what we were saying and we unleashed. God, we ask you to cut it off from us. That we ask you to set us free from those things where we opened our mouth and didn't understand or spoke things that we should not have spoken. We ask you to cleanse us by the power of the blood. God, and we ask you that even right now you restore and make all things new. We hand it to you. We give it to you. And we say, may the Lord bless us. Bless us. God, we are your people, the sheep of your pastures, and we desire to be blessed by our King. Because that is the promises you gave our father Abraham. That our going would be blessed. That our nations would be blessed. That that which you've given unto us would be blessed. That our crops are blessed. Our, our, our animals are blessed. What we put our hand to is blessed. Father, our lands are blessed. Our vehicles are blessed. Our cupboards are blessed, God. Our refrigerators last longer. Our tires, they last longer. The same glory of God that was with the children of Israel in the, in the wilderness, that, that their clothes didn't even wear out, their shoes didn't wear out. It's the same glory of God over us. That our, our possessions that you've given unto us, they are blessed. Our animals, Father. Yes. Our lands. And if we don't have them, we ask for land. Whether we ask for inheritances. Whether we ask that we are blessed. In Jesus' name. Not for our own pleasures and glories, God. But that the name of our God would be glorified. Because it is you. It is you. It is you. And God, we just we thank you even now for what you have done and what you were doing. And then we declare we are blessed. We will be blessed. And we will be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Jesus is King. Yes. And the devil is still alive. Be blessed in Jesus' name.